Chapter 671 Elephant Rex Strike Six raven bolts launched consecutively into the frosty bear's face. The beast tried to look away, to avoid them piercing any of its eyes, but it was too late. The bear had drawn too near to the launch point of the bolts, and it didn't have sufficient time to react. One of the bolts struck directly underneath the eye, which caused it to bleed. The frosty bear became incredibly angry. It threw itself back on its two hind legs and a frigid aura emanated from its body. Its paws came down, trying to strike Hans Sr. Hansen put the peacock crossbow away and evaded the frosty bear's lethal attack. He then jumped into the air, summoned flaming Rex Spike, and took aim at his foe's head. Ping! Fire and blood spewed everywhere as Hansen crowned the bear's head with an ugly scorch mark. Roar! Damage such as that was not enough to take the creature's life, but it did trigger its rage. Hansen was at the center of its attention now. It quickly lunged forward with its paws in an attempt to grab Hans Sr. Again, Hansen dodged. He evaded the bear, but it was close. He scratched his arm and noticed the presence of a cut that was bleeding through his armor. Hansen retreated, with Frosty Bear still gunning for him. Luckily, this was Hans Senator, and he did not fear the fatal, chilly aura of the bear. If the roles were reversed and Wang Yuhang was on the run, he'd be dead right now. Big dumb bear, over here. Wang Yuhang had already run a great distance away. After his swift recovery, he noticed Hansen was in danger, and so he did his best to provoke the bear. This simple touting always worked in the past, and its winning streak did not end this day. Despite the hatred the bear felt for Hansen, it was once again attracted by Wang Yuhang. It was as if Wang Yuhang had murdered its parents or something. Hansen knew that if this were to continue, they'd be unable to win the fight. The flaming wreck spike was strong enough to wreck the bear's body, but Hansen wasn't. His fitness was not high enough, which meant he was unable to deal the deadly damage he needed to bring an end to the bear. But Hansen knew what to do. Without saying a word, he rushed after the frosty bear, and at the same time, he cast the Dongshin Sutra to simulate the energy of the bone elephant. The overwhelming power of a super elephant now buffed Han Senator his body almost imploded under the duress of handling such supreme power as his muscles and bones struggled to maintain control. Wang Yuhang continued running forward. Li Xingluan continued firing arrows to aid how he could, but they were useless against the enraged beast. The frosty bear was closing in on Wang Yuhang. Hansen was pushing his potential power to the max, and it was reaching a tipping point. The bones inside him rattled and screamed for reprieve. With the bear still focused on Wang Yuhang, Hansen leapt into the air with both of his hands clutching the flaming wreck spike. He swung his weapon and all the terrifying power that accumulated inside him was unleashed. It was as if space-time itself was dealt a blow by the attack, and the air thundered with frightening sound. Ping! The wreck spike, blazing with fire, brought down a hideous, devastating blow against the bear's head. A deep, Squelching thud accompanied its landing as the skull of its target sunk somewhat. The flame snapped in a dizzying crowd of embers as the fur of the bear's head turned to soot. After that hit, Hansen immediately summoned his wings to fly up to the sky. Most of his energy had been drained following the strike. If the bear was not killed by that attack and immediately retaliated, Hansen wouldn't have had the energy to dodge the foe. Hansen observed the field of battle from above and noticed the bear had stopped moving. Blood seeped from the wounds of its caved-in skull as its body wobbled. Roar! The frosty bear blasted, which shocked Hans Sr. Then the frosty bear ran off. Hansen's heart was brought much joy. He knew that his elephant wreck strike must have dealt an insane amount of damage to the bear. Otherwise, it wouldn't have tried to run off. After it, we cannot lose it. Hansen called out from the air as he took off an airborne pursuit. Hansen's body felt weak, though. He couldn't attack the bear again for a short while. It was lucky that the flying bee's soul did not draw from an individual's strength. If it did, he wouldn't have been able to keep up with the fleeing creature. Wang Yuhang and Li Xingluan obeyed the command and also went after it. They tried to cut off and surround the escaping bear, but their attempts failed. They did not have super beast soul weapons, so they could not even deal damage to the bear's pelt. But the frosty bear's brain must have been heavily damaged, as its judgment and movement made little sense. It did not try to jump into the sea for a quicker escape. Instead, it ran off towards the ice field. It still had speed, but its movements were shaky. Strike the wound on its head. Li Xingluan fired an arrow at the wound created by Han Sen's elephant wreck strike. 
This caused the wound to gush out more blood, and the beast to cry out in pain. Wang Yuhang wanted to rush ahead, but he only had a single ancient sword, and thus could not get close. The frosty bear was managing to pick up its pace, despite the pain it was enduring. The three of them were in tight pursuit, but they eventually lagged behind and felt themselves losing it. Fortunately, the damage dealt to the brain was severe, and it wasn't working well as a result. The bear did not change direction once, maintaining its course the entire time. As a result, the trio didn't lose its tracks. The frosty bear ran deeper and deeper into the ice field. Eventually, its speed did slow down despite its desire to run. Move. Move. Li Xingluan rode a mount to catch up. He shouted at people on the ice field, telling them to move out of the way and not intercept the fleeing bear, lest they get grievously injured. Most people did avoid the bear, but one group didn't. Instead, they ran towards it, wanting a piece of the action. Pa, why do we have to step aside? Whoever kills it, owns it. Plain and simple. I don't see your name on the bear, so why can't we kill it? Huh, the man leading the group said. Li Xingluan looked at the people and realized it was Qi Xiuan's men from the Black God Army. Although they belonged to the goddess shelter, the four armies were individual and Li Xingluan didn't have the authority to tell them to stand down. After the people rushed towards the bear, others who were nearby noticed the possibility of nabbing an easy kill, too. They also sought to join the fray. But everyone thought Li Xingluan was only hunting a sacred blood creature, one that looked heavily damaged. The possibility of earning an easy beast soul was all too enticing. It was too late for Hansen to stop them, however. He watched many people descend on the bear, to which the creature they were pursuing had a wretched reaction. It summoned its frosty aura and unleashed a hail of ice chips to pelt the fresh attackers, freezing the majority of them. The strongest of those who sought to join in were most likely of a fitness level of about 100. They had not even unlocked their gene locks, and as a result, they had no chance of withstanding such an attack. The bear then pummeled the ground, which led to a cascade of blood. A few people were crushed, and none of their bodies were left complete. Severed limbs were strewn about, and organs were left exposed. One person was crushed into mincemeat. Chapter 672 Hail to the Leader after the bear's manic slaughter of evolvers, bodies and blood lay strewn across the snow. Those who joined the fray looking for an easy kill, and had been left alive, were green in their faces. They wished they could grow an additional two legs to run off faster. There was something wrong with the bear's head. It didn't care for much of anything, and it sought to kill anyone and anything that crossed its path indiscriminately. With the bodies disfigured and slumped across each other on the icy drifts, Heaven knew how many it had happily killed. Even though Hansen wanted to stop it, he didn't have the strength right now. His energy had yet to recover from his first usage of Elephant Rex Strike, so he couldn't use it again just yet. And ordinary strikes were useless against the rampaging behemoth. Hansen could only hope his energy would recover soon. If he could wallop the bear with one more Elephant Rex Strike, it would surely perish. Oh no. The frosty bear is headed towards one of my night class shelters. Li Xingluan's face changed. He called out to Wang Yuhang, saying, Little uncle, you have to draw it away. Wang Yuhang, with a depressed look on his face, said, I assure you, I am trying. But the fiend is no longer right in the head. It won't pay me heed as it once did. Li Xingluan's eyes turned red. He rushed ahead, attempting to evacuate the shelter that the bear was approaching. When the frosty bear saw it, the beast made no delay in targeting it. The people inside would not have enough time to escape. It was a shelter oriented around business, so most of the people inside didn't even know how to fight. If the frosty bear entered, it'd be a massacre. Blood would run up and down the walls as it hacked and hewed the people inside with little to no resistance. Many people inside the shelter had witnessed the bear's previous killing spree out on the tundra. It created mass chaos and panic as people climbed over each other in a bid to escape with their lives. The halls were clogged with people as they rushed out in disheveled unison. The gates were congested with the maddened people, which made evacuation efforts even slower. Li Xingluan kept firing arrows at the frosty bear's wounds, but that only enraged it further. Its violence was only increasing, perhaps in response to its near-death state. It wanted to lash out in one last blaze of blood and terror before it succumbed to its wounds. Hansen looked and frowned. Although the shelter belonged to Li Xingluan, Every shelter across the ice field paid taxes, which helped to line Hansen's pockets with cash. 
This shelter in particular was amongst the highest paying shelters when it came to taxes. Hansen didn't want his income reduced, and neither did he want to see people slain. His energy had yet to recover, so he couldn't use Elephant Rex Strike again. The frosty bear drew near the shelter and threw its weight against the wall, as if it were trying to claw its way over. Its front paws created deep scratch marks on the surface of the wall. With its frosty air, it tried to climb the wall. The people in the shelter, beyond those walls, screamed in fear. The wall was all that separated them from the frosty bear. They could see it, though, all murderous and mad-looking. The caved-in skull and bloody face only made it look even more fearsome. It was like a scary giant that ate people, and any second now, it'd be over the wall and ready to dine on the buffet of helpless residents. Hansen saw the frosty bear perched up against the wall of the shelter. He gritted his teeth, flapped his wings to pick up speed, and soared down towards his enemy. Everyone watched Hansen descend from the sky to land, with a giant fire-wreathed weapon in hand. It looked like an XXL drill head that was spinning at max speed. It looked terribly powerful. Go to hell, bear. Eat my flaming asshole cracker. Hansen leapt into the air, his war cry emboldening his spirit. The fiery wreck spike was aimed at the butthole of the frosty bear, which was still up against the wall. With a tremendous thrust, Hansen rammed his weapon up its anus. Fire blazed and blood gushed as the two-meter-long drill ground inside the bear's posterior. Hansen's heart was skipping like mad, and his bones groaned under the thundering power he had summoned. Hansen had once again pushed his strength to the max, and with both hands clutching the weapon, he shoved it as deep as it could go. Half of the spinning wreck spike had been pushed in, streams of blood squirting into the wind like petals on the breeze. Everyone who watched the scene was frozen in place, without motion. The strike they had just witnessed made them extremely happy, though the muscles in their buttocks clenched tighter. Roar. The frosty bear let out a painful cry. It attempted to turn around and grab Hans Sr. But Hansen let go of the flaming wreck spike to dodge, and when he was clear, he kicked the handle of the protruding wreck spike seven times. Every kick was like a hammer, malleting a peg deeper and deeper into the brown earth. After the seventh kick, Hansen shouted to the sky. He drew what remained of his power to his fists and punched the handle of the wreck spike, the only part that had not been driven inside the bear. After that, the entire flaming wreck spike was inside its body. Blood cascaded from its behind as the bear cried out, but its yelp was cut short as the body slumped down to the ground heavily. It resulted in a quake that vibrated the entire shelter. Super creature hunted. Giant frosty bear. The beast's soul has not been acquired. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to obtain a random numeric amount of super geno points, ranging from 0 to 10. Hansen heard the familiar voice, but was disappointed not to receive the beast's soul, despite the incredible difficulty he had in slaying the super creature. But Hansen had to expect it sometime. Still, he did have a high drop rate of beast souls when it came to super creatures. Of course, no one would mind an extra goodie for performing a trying task, and the same applied to Hans Senator, therefore, he had been hopeful that he'd be able to procure the frosty bear's beast soul. Everyone's eyes opened wide in bewilderment, watching Hans and return to the skies like a god. No one spoke a word, and the area was deathly quiet. But then, after a period of silence had passed, the evolvers inside the shelter began to celebrate his triumph. Someone shouted, Hail to the leader! The others who had just escaped death joined in, chanting, Hail to the leader. Hail to the asshole cracker god. The lead chanter changed the chant. Countless others followed suit once again, shouting, Hail to the asshole cracker god. The voices rumbled to the sky and haunts and almost plummeted back down after hearing the joyous cries. He actually felt kind of awkward. If he still had the strength, he'd go back down, find out who started such a ridiculous chant, and kill him. The frosty bear's body disappeared. Hansen grabbed the fist-sized ice crystal from where the corpse once lay and flew away. The news of Hansen's triumph over the frosty bear spread far and wide across the ice field, but the news of Ji Qing's own slaying of a super creature had yet to be announced. Ordinary people did not know about the existence of super creatures, and so it was believed that Hansen had only slain an extra strong sacred blood creature. No one knew it was a super creature. But the people who witnessed the fight that transpired on that day recounted the tale of Hans and cracking open a giant, frosty bear's anus many times. And this story is what earned Hans and the title Asshole Cracker God.
When people heard this story, they wanted to know more about it. Chapter 673 The Secret of the Life Geno Essence Hansen, Wang Yuhang, and Li Xingluan sat in a triangular formation in an ice cave. They placed the fist sized life geno essence in the middle. Wang Yuhang gulped, asking, Is this really a life geno essence? Li Xingluan could not believe what they had accomplished this day, and so he said, Did we really kill a super creature? Are we the first to ever do so in the second god sanctuary? Bossman, are you going to sell the life geno essence? According to the contract I signed with you, I should receive a 30% cut of the proceeds. If you want, I'll pay you the additional 70% and purchase it off you entirely, Wang Yuhang asked, looking at Han Sr. From the contract that they had signed, it stated that Han Sin was to receive 50%, Wang Yuhang was to receive 30%, and Li Xingluan was to receive 20%. If Han Sin decided that he didn't want it, what happened with the life geno essence next fell to Wang Yuhang? Of course I want it. I want super geno points, Hansen replied succinctly. There was no way he was going to pass up such a treasure. Wang Yuhang coughed and said, Bossman, from what I have heard, after the Qi family obtained their own life geno essence, no progress was made. They tried everything they could, but they were unable to obtain super geno points. If you return with this in your possession, it will most likely yield the same result. If you want, sell it to me. Or foregoing that, provide it to me in the Wang estate. We can investigate its secrets on your behalf and see if we can learn how to obtain super geno points from the life geno essence. The Ji family's life geno essence was never consumed? Han Sen was surprised to hear this. He had assumed that Ji Qing had eaten the life geno essence a long time ago. He did not expect that they were still investigating how to obtain super geno points from the artifact and couldn't simply eat it straight away. Yes, they have tried a great many different ways of eating it, but they were all to no avail. The life geno essence is like obsidian. It cannot be hewn in two, burnt, or drowned, Wang Yuhang said. Li Xingluan then chimed in to say, It is, indeed. I hacked into the Ji family system and perused their records. They have tried countless different methods, but they were all hopeless. They're at their wit's end, trying to figure out how they might gain super geno points. They even called upon professionals from the Alliance, but that was futile, too. Zero progress has been made. That is most likely why the Alliance has yet to make an announcement about the super creature and super geno points. Did they try swallowing it? Hansen asked. They did. It was useless swallowing it, as well. It came out whole and was not digested in the slightest, Li Xingluan said. Hansen frowned when he heard this. This was different than what he knew about super geno points. He had just licked it and swallowed it whole. Why was Ji Qing's different? But it was not impossible. After all, the other two he had managed to collect here in the second god's sanctuary were inedible, too. They were different than the one he managed to get in the first god's sanctuary. If the Ji family's life geno essence is undable, then that is quite interesting, Hansen thought to himself. He believed there had to be a problem somewhere. Bossman, consider it. Lend it to me and the Wong family will do their best to investigate it. I promise you, the moment a discovery is made, you will be the first to know. Wang Yuhang said, This is my first time getting a life geno essence as well. How about you let me investigate it first? The share you deserve. Do you want it now or next time? Hansen did not want to give it to the Wang family for research. But, if he really couldn't figure out how to consume the item, then he might have to reconsider. Save it for next time, Wang Yuhang and Li Xingluan replied, simultaneously. They didn't have any particular lack of finance, so they weren't willing to give up their share for money. And so, they decided to save it for next time. Hansen brought the Frosty Bear's life geno essence back to research. This life geno essence was cold, and a striking opposite to the fire scale T-Rex's life geno essence. But because Hansen had jade skin, he was not afraid of its cold aura. Hansen was in his room. As he held it in his hands, he repeatedly licked it. But no matter how many times he tried, nothing happened. He licked and licked, but it did not melt. I still can't eat it. What gives? What must I do to make this essence become super geno points? Hansen held onto the life geno essence, continuing to observe it. Is it like those Western fantasy stories? Perhaps these are the cores of beasts? Do I have to practice the same element to absorb it? Whilst holding onto the icy crystal, Hansen began running jade skin. 
He once absorbed Shui Yiquang's frosted air. If he needed the same element to absorb the life geno essence, then could the cold air of the crystal be absorbed by Jade Skin? But no matter how many times or ways Hansen tried casting Jade Skin, there was no reaction. It couldn't be absorbed or refined or anything. Nothing would happen. This is strange. For what reason is it like this? If the G family were unable to figure out this life geno essence, does that mean the first God sanctuary and second God sanctuary are the same? But if so, how was I able to eat a life geno essence whilst I was in the first God sanctuary? And why can Ji Qing not eat one, despite being in the first God sanctuary, too? Hansen just couldn't wrap his head around it. Hansen now really wanted people in the first God sanctuary to kill more super creatures, so he could find out whether or not others in the first God sanctuary could eat a life geno essence. Hansen was researching the life geno essence, and the rumor of him potentially slaying a super creature began to spread. After all, there were many witnesses, and there were many factions privy to the knowledge of the existence of super creatures. They were starting to believe what Hansen had killed was a super creature of the second god sanctuary. Hansen is a special man. When the Wang family heard of this through Wang Yuhang, they were rightfully shocked. Mr. Han's child is special indeed. He has only been in the second god sanctuary for just over a year. He actually killed a super creature there. The Ning family heard this news, too, and they immediately took it as fact that Hansen was the child of Han Jingji. The Ji family came forward first, damn it. The Ji family's competitors heard the news, believing Hansen belonged to the Ji family. And the Ji family members were confused. They did not know what to make of the situation. Ji Yinran's boyfriend did not have a background of any particular renown or any important ties. Some people in the Ji family did not like Hansen very much. But now there was a rumor making the rounds that he had killed a super creature in the second god sanctuary. At first, the Ji family did not believe it. After all, the Ji family had spent on a lot on providing Ji Qing what she needed to slay a super creature. They hired 300 elite evolvers to help Ji Qing kill a super creature in the first god sanctuary. It was a big price to pay to hunt a creature. And the rumor also stated that Hansen pretty much took care of the super creature solo. And it was a super creature of the second god sanctuary, too. It was difficult to believe. Chapter 674 Shocking the Alliance Even though members of the G family did not believe it was true, many others had come to ask them about Han since obtaining a life geno essence. Many officers and organizations from all across the Alliance came to ask them, all due to the belief that Han Sin was a part of the G family. Being in such a spotlight forced the G family to take the topic seriously. Words of the deed also reached the very top of the family, G Ruajin. My baby girl, it looks as if you found quite the man. Ji Ruajin had a wry smile. As he perused the information concerning Han Senator, he picked up his communicator and gave Ji Yin in a call. Dad, you will be the president soon. How can you find time to give your lonely daughter a call? Ji Yin Ren said, with a sulky voice. In the past two years, Ji Ruajin had been running for an election to be president of the alliance, and because of this, his care and concern for familial matters had lagged. His time for Ji Yin Ren was one such consequence, but despite her sourness over the slight neglect tie on, she knew how busy such important matters made him. Don't say that. I'm only part of the election. Ji Ruajin gave a warm smile, then continued to say, Your father has been really busy recently, but the reason I have come looking for you right now is a matter that concerns my future son in law. Why? What has happened with Hansen? Has something gone wrong? Ji Yin Ren's face changed. Something has happened. Yes, and it's quite the shocker. Ji Ruajin stopped smiling to say these words with modest seriousness. What happened? Ji Yinren quickly asked. He might have killed a super creature in the second god sanctuary. Could you aid me in asking around and evaluating the authenticity of this tale? And Ji Ruajin would not beat around the bush when it came to communicating with his daughter. He knew her well, and she preferred being told things straight no matter how favorable or unfavorable the subject of discussion was. Ji Yin and showed a look of both shock and joy. She knew her boyfriend was good, but if he had achieved such a dizzying feat, that was way better than any of her previously lofty expectations. Because Ji Yin and wasn't very talented in fighting, she didn't care much for the fighting world or society. She didn't stay in the loop much. 
But as with everyone else, she knew a lot about Ji Qing and the aid she received in her own felling of a super creature. The finances involved were high, particularly so for a single kill. But for Hansen to silently slay a super creature of his own volition, with little to no support, was remarkable and shocking. The second god sanctuary super creatures were much harder than the ones that populated the first god sanctuary. So it was difficult for others to wrap their heads around how Hansen could have accomplished such a task. Ji Yin and then sought to give Hansen a call, but found that his line was busy. He was in a call with someone else. Ji Yin and hung up her communicator and did not push further. She knew it was only a matter of time before Hansen would come looking for her. She was sure of it. When Hansen returned to the Alliance, his communicator was ringing nonstop. When Hansen took a look, there were countless missed calls. The person calling him right now was Qin Xian. Hansen picked up his device and answered it. Qin Xian's image leapt out, immediately saying, I know you are busy right now, but I have to ask you this on behalf of my supervisor. Did you really kill a super creature? And if you did, are you looking to sell the life Geno essence? I did kill a super creature, yes. It was a giant frosty bear. And no, I have no plans of selling the life Geno essence. If I ever change my mind and have a look at flipping it, I'll call you up first, Hansen said, smiling. Qin Xian presented Hansen with a complicated look. She had watched Hansen grow up and always admired him, thinking he'd one day become someone quite special. That being said, she never dreamed Hansen would be the first person to slay a super creature in the Second God Sanctuary. Countless other factions had vied to slay the first super creature, but none had managed it. Even right now, during the G family's most successful era, they had to pay a great sum of money to hunt and kill a super creature in the first god sanctuary. But Hansen had killed a super creature in the second god sanctuary quietly, with no fanfare or support. Such a trial would have been unfathomably difficult in the first god sanctuary, but far more so in the second god sanctuary. Everyone believed Hansen belonged to the G family, but Qin Xian knew that Hansen didn't. She didn't think the G family gave him much help, if at all. He most likely slew the beast through the power of his own strength and abilities. It reminded her of the little boy who entered the shelter, back in the day. Right now, that little boy had ascended the social ladder and performed wondrous deeds that even the most financially superfluous nobles could not dream of achieving. This thought made Qin Xian feel strange, which was why she had a complicated expression. Sure. Contact me if you change your mind, then. You must be busy right now, so I shan't bother you further, Qin Xian told Hansen, with a smile. Goodbye, Captain. Talk again soon, Hansen said. Hansen hung up the communicator and then turned it off completely. There were too many people trying to get in touch with him. Half of these were people he did not even know, so he couldn't be bothered to answer the communicator every time it rang. Hansen left his room to visit Ji Yinran's office. Now that the whole world seemed to know what he had done, he felt she deserved a more thorough explanation. As he was standing near her office's door, Hansen saw Annie. The way she looked at him this day was not the same as it used to be, it was not cold, and it looked as if there was something on her mind that she wished to tell him. Annie was much stronger than Hansen, as the two were not of the same level. But now, Annie did not dare underestimate Hans Sr. She had heard the news of Hansen's achievement, in which he had killed a super creature, Anyone who had performed a task as great as that should be respected. Hansen did what he did without the support of other factions, yet people believed he had the backing of the G family. And he knew the truth. She knew that the G family had not helped him in any way, and that he had never asked for any help, either. The only help Hansen had ever received from the G family was when Ji Yin and exerted the influence of her position to obtain Daphne for him. It was because of this that Annie had always believed Hansen to be a loser leeching on the Ji family. But ever since that one time, Hansen had not used Ji Yin and or her position as a way to receive anything. He killed a super creature solo, which was staggering. And he knew how difficult it was to achieve half of what he had done, and that was with support. Hansen had achieved this all without support and done something she had believed to be impossible. He shocked not only her, but everyone else in the alliance as well. Now Annie could no longer deem the name Hansen synonymous with the word loser. Hansen was always so relaxed, calm, and gentle with Ji Yin Ran. She thought it was just an act to attract Ji Yin Ran, but all of her perceptions on his personality had been altered. 
She felt as if she did not understand him anymore. Chapter 675 Life Geno Essence Prediction You really killed a super creature in the second god sanctuary? Ji Yin and asked with her mouth wide open in shock as she looked at Han Senator, even though Hansen had explained the details of what transpired, she found it difficult to believe. So, she had to ask the question again. I said I killed it, didn't I? That means I killed it. Is it really that difficult for you to believe? Hansen sat on Ji Yinron's office chair, holding her as she sat on his lap. Will you die if you don't bluff me? Ji Yinron jested as she looked at Hansen's boisterous and cocky face. She couldn't help but squeeze his waist in response. What did the family say? Hansen smiled and asked. My dad told me to ask if you really did kill a super creature. He asked if you received the beast soul and life geno essence, and whether or not you'd be willing to sell them. Ji Yin and explained to Hansen, without dilly-dallying. I killed it, yes. But I didn't receive the beast soul. I did get the life geno essence, however. If you need it, I will give it to you. Hansen smiled. Hansen understood Ji Yinran, so that was why he said that. Ji Yinran loved what he had just said, and replied, That was my dad's idea. If you need it, you should keep it for yourself. You earned it. So, don't worry, there is no pressure for you to give it up. And if you do end up selling it, please consider selling it to the Ji family first. After all, I am your girlfriend. Give me some more time to research this stubborn thing first. If I am still unable to consume it, I'll allow my wife to handle it, Hansen said, smiling. Who is your wife? Ji Yin and rolled her eyes, but she was super pleased on the inside. Hansen was in a rush, trying to find a way he could consume the life geno essence. If he still couldn't find a way, he wouldn't mind giving one away for the Ji family to research. After all, the Ji family was powerful and far-reaching. There was a high chance they might find the solution, and it'd make Ji Yin unhappy. Hansen knew that Ji Yin and had never complained about his status during their time together, but he knew that she had received a lot of pressure from her family regarding her choice to be with him. The life Gino essence could earn Ji Yin and a lot of relief from her family. Of course, giving her the life Gino essence was the worst case scenario. Hansen wanted to eat it, first and foremost. And if he was able to eat it, he wouldn't have to sell it to the Ji family. Hansen had a few theories of his own regarding the nature of the life geno essences. He could not, however, prove them. If people could not eat the essence from the first god sanctuary, that meant the life geno essences were the same between both shelters. For absorption, they'd need a special method. But Hansen had eaten the life geno essence without trouble in the first god sanctuary. Now that he thought back to his time there, the first god sanctuary was different than the second god sanctuary in a number of ways. The first life geno essence he ate was not obtained through hunting. It was because the golden growler spat the life geno essence to the baby golden growler, and Hansen had stolen it. Ever since then, Hansen had been able to absorb super geno points by slaying super creatures. It was only now that Hansen realized that might have been the reason. Aside from that, Hansen could not remember any other differences between now and the time he was in the first god sanctuary. Everything he had in the first god sanctuary, he had now, but even better. The only difference was his inability to consume the life geno essences. Hansen could only theorize that the reason he could absorb life geno essences in the first god sanctuary was the golden growler. But thinking of things this way, Hansen could only hope that his predictions weren't true. There was no way he'd be able to find another super creature willing to spit out another life geno essence for him. There must be a way to absorb a life geno essence, but whatever it is, I just haven't found it yet, Hansen thought to himself. After returning to his room, Hansen replied to a few messages his friends had sent him. He told them about his success in slaying a super creature. Humans were getting better and better in this world. It was only a matter of time before someone else succeeded in the task of killing a super creature especially in the first god sanctuary. It was likely more and more would be killed there. Hansen did not think there was a point in keeping it a secret anymore. But Hansen knew that killing a super creature in the second god sanctuary was a deed that no one aside from him would be able to accomplish for a long time to come. The super creatures in the second god sanctuary were frighteningly powerful. No one could kill a super creature unless it was severely injured beforehand without first having fully maxed out their super geno points in the first god sanctuary. 
If others wanted to kill a super creature in the second god sanctuary, they would have to wait until someone had maxed out their super geno points in the first god sanctuary. Since the people in the first god sanctuary couldn't consume life geno essences, no one would be able to max out their super geno points before coming to the second god sanctuary. No progress could be made with the current state of things. Right now, Hansen was the anomaly. He was the only one who could make progress. Only he could hunt super creatures in the second god sanctuary and exclusively obtain the resources such beasts would provide. But Hansen was worried that if the second god sanctuary's super creatures were so difficult to kill, then the creatures of the third god sanctuary and fourth god sanctuary would be unfathomably cruel. The alliance forbade any news from the third god sanctuary and fourth god sanctuary. Very seldom would news about them be released, and most of those articles were useless and devoid of any concrete information. Hansen could enter the third god sanctuary with maxed out super geno points. But after that, would his ability to slay super creatures solo remain? He wasn't so sure. Without maxed out super geno points as a base statistic going into the second god sanctuary, humans were weak there. If they did not max out super geno points in the second god sanctuary, Hansen was uncertain whether humans would stand a chance in the third god sanctuary. Just existing in the third god sanctuary as a faceless minority, without the talents to excel or make any progress, would be ridiculously hard. There's no use thinking about it now. I cannot even absorb the life geno essence. Hansen openly mocked himself. He was talking to everyone he knew, telling them each about his conundrum. Holy smokes, as you say. You really killed a super creature in the second god sanctuary. After Ting Liu heard it from the horse's mouth, he couldn't help but yell. Strong. Yi Lu replied with only a single word. God. You are the strongest person in the second god sanctuary, without a doubt. Yu Ting exaggerated. Everyone's reaction was different, but most were driven by simple shock. Yu Ting told Hansen that people from the Qin family had come looking for him. They told Zhu Ting to continue being friendly with Hansen, to see whether or not he himself might one day be on Hansen's team like Wang Yuhang and Li Xingluan. The Qin family also told Zhu Ting that they wouldn't be pursuing the matters concerning Qin Ran. They hoped if Hansen was one day willing to sell the life geno essences he collected, he would consider selling one to the Qin family. Zhu Ting was really worried, given his precarious situation. He didn't expect things to turn out this way and the amicable turn of events made him quite excited. He really killed a super creature? After Lei Hengwu heard the news, he was shocked. It pained him to believe Han Sin and Wang Yuhang managed to do it, and that really annoyed him. Chapter 676 His Reputation Han Sin returned to the shelter. Near the Devil's Mountain, Lu Hui and the Northern Master Huang Yunlong sent someone over, hoping to cooperate with Han Sin to hunt another super creature. Han Sin neither accepted nor refused. He merely said, maybe one day. Even Philip had taken the trip over to see what it took to join Han Sen's team. Although Chi Xiuen did not want to bow his head to Han Sen, the person in Dong Lin ordered him to visit Han Sen and request the opportunity to cooperate with him. Also, Yang Manli was the busiest person around. As a result, Han Sen was a vacant leader, deflecting all tasks and leadership responsibilities onto her, so she was the one who had to attend to every request. In addition to that, she had to take care of the special forces business. This left no time to herself. It does not matter if you are the leader of the shelter or just the leader of the special forces, you should do something. It was difficult for young Monli to attend and finish all the work she had for the day, but when it was done, she had to pay Hansen a visit. This was something important to discuss, but when she walked in, she saw Hansen sitting on a chair one hand holding a golden gourd and his other hand busy stroking his silver fox. There was a silver-haired lady behind him, also. She was busy massaging his shoulders as another blonde-haired lady tended to his feet. She thought it wasn't fair on her, having to work so hard every day while Hansen reclined in his chair getting waited on, hand and foot. I am satisfied with the quality of your work, Hansen said, smiling. Young Monli had been busy, doing a lot of stuff at all times. She was practically in charge of the ice field. You should at least write your own reports. Yang Monli could not cope with Han Sen's current attitude. She did not understand why a person who made so much money was so carefree and casual about all things. She also wondered why he let her be in charge of everything as well. 
With the position she was in, it wouldn't take much for her to bring down Han Sen's empire if she chose to. Lining her own pockets by skimming the books would have been easy enough, too. But Yang Manli found that Han Sen didn't care about the business at all. Being a leader of the ice field might have been a great boon of wealth for somebody else. But to a person who had just killed a super creature, the ice field were nothing. He actually became the first person to kill a super creature in the Second God Sanctuary? Although Yang Manli was frequently surprised by Han Sen's deeds, this one took the cake. There was a 200-year history of humans occupying shelters, and yet in all that time, Han Sen was the first. Yang Manli struggled to believe it. Thinking back to how Han Sen used to be, she never thought he'd develop so far as to become the person who now sat in front of her. What reports? I thought you always took care of my reports. Han Sen looked at Yang Manli with a fair look of surprise. When Yang Manli heard his words, she lifted up her lips to say, How am I supposed to know how you killed the super creature? How am I supposed to know and write about that? Ah, in that case, I will relay to you the details. Hansen had no problem with writing reports, but he believed them to be a waste of time. And the last thing he wanted was ending up like someone famous in the force. As a result, everything came through Yang Manli's hands. Hansen now had a problem, with Yang Manli helping him the way she was, he was free to do as he pleased. But if someone stole her away someday, where would he find another person like her? Someone who could do everything and love her job at the same time? Should I give Yang Manli a raise? Give her a higher percentage? Hansen thought to himself, I can help you write the report, but there is a mission you must attend to yourself, Yang Manli told Han Sr. What mission would that be? Hansen looked at Yang Manli as he asked, A young man has just arrived at the Second God Sanctuary born on the ice field. He requests that you protect him, Yang Manli said. Hansen furrowed his eyebrows and asked, where will I find the time to do such a thing? Let one of the other groups bring him into the fold. I won't stand for that. Yang Manli lifted a smile. Of course you will. Even if it was the son of God himself, he'd get the same treatment as everyone else, Hansen proudly proclaimed. He's not the son of God, but his surname is Qin. So, you go attend to that. I am unable to help you in such a task. Yang Manli shrugged. Chin? Hansen looked puzzled and asked, What is his relation to Captain Chin? He is Captain Chin's nephew. Yang Manli smiled at Hansen again. Oh, I see. Then have him come find me. Hansen's tone changed at the drop of a hat. The Chin family owned the special squad, and they had taken care of Hansen's family a lot. For his relationship with Chin Xian, he had to accept this task. While he was waiting for Qin Wen Zhao, someone followed him. This was a person that Han Sun was familiar with. Su Xiaoqiao? Han Sun looked at the person with surprise, not expecting that he too had become an evolver and arrived at the ice field. Brother Sun, I have finally found the organization. Su Xiaoqiao excitedly grabbed Han Sun, looking as if he wanted to cry. Han Sun chatted with Su Xiaoqiao for a bit, and then asked Yang Manli to give him a position in the goddess army. After that, he went on to see Qin Wanzhao. He looked barely 20 years old, and he exuded the image of a gentle, young man. He had a soft baby face, one that Hansen thought women loved. Greetings, Uncle Senator, I am Qin Wanzhao. The young man was polite in greeting Han Senator, but in Hansen's heart, he was taken aback, thinking, Uncle, am I old enough to be considered so? I'm only in my 20s, a few years older than you. It seemed like Qin Wen Zhao understood what discomforting thoughts now plagued Han Sen's mind. He said, My Annie told me to respect you. And since you both are of a similar age, I thought I'd call you uncle. If I didn't call you uncle, my Annie would think I was being disrespectful. I suppose that is okay. Han Sen responded, caring little for the intricacies of formalities, overall. He looked at Qin Wen Zhao and asked, Why do you want me to be your guardian? Qin Wen Zhao replied, my Annie has always told me that you are a good and powerful man. It is my hope that one day, I can become like you. It was fortunate that I was sent to the ice field, so I came here hoping to learn from you. And do not fret. I won't be a burden or cause you unnecessary trouble. I will work and train around your schedule. Really? Your Annie really said that about me? Hansen Hart was happy to hear that, and so he had to ask. Yes, she talks about you often. She frequently uses you as a role model in our teachings, someone we should strive to be like. The young ones in our family really admire you, Qin Wenjiao said. Hmm, can you give me an example of how Qin Xin usually compliments me? Hansen shamelessly asked. 
Chapter 677 Pink Little Snake Qin Wen Zhao was a young man who was polite and knew his place, so Hansen had no problem with becoming his guardian. What surprised Hansen the most, though, was how talented Qin Wen Zhao looked. Now that super creatures had been found, Hansen wondered why the Qin family allowed him to become an evolver so soon. He could have waited another few years to see if he could collect super geno points. Recently, Hansen's schedule had been quite liberating. He couldn't find appropriate super creatures to slay, so most of his time was spent on practicing the Dongshin Sutra or in researching the life geno essence. But there had been no progress on either front. For the latter activity, being unable to achieve results on the life geno essence himself, Hansen decided to lend it to the G family. For the entire time it had been in his hands, he did countless eyes watching him like hawks, willing to bend over backward to secure the life geno essence for themselves. Giving it away to the G family would prompt others to stop pestering him, and Han Sin could go about doing his stuff freely. It would be best if they could find out how to absorb the life geno essence. If they figured it out, Han Sin could focus on hunting super creatures. Of course, if they did not find out how, then there was no loss. Seeing as he had absolutely nothing to do, Hansen prepared to take Qin Wen Zhao and Su Xiao Chao out on an adventure and let them take in the glory of the Second God Sanctuary. But in truth, Hansen had a destination in mind, the Peach Forest. He had yet to achieve a breakthrough with his Dong Shen Sutra, and he had no way of gauging how long it might take if he had to stick with it all by himself. If he managed to eat one of the mystic peaches from the giant tree, Perhaps he could achieve the breakthrough he had been looking for and unlock the gene lock. He brought Qin Wen Zhao and Su Xiao Chao with him, and everything went swimmingly. Along their journey towards the peach forest, they managed to kill a good number of creatures. When they reached the eaves of the peach forest, Hansen did not dare bring them inside. He took a quick look himself, though, and noticed that all the flowers had wilted. Beneath the green leaves, however, he could spot green fruit that was as small as beans. It seemed it would be a while longer before they were ripe enough for collection and consumption. Hansen only peered at them from the outskirts of the forest, and following that, made preparations to depart with the two disciples. After all, the peach forest was a dangerous place, and there was no telling how many super creatures might have continued to reside beneath its darkened boughs. Even if Hansen was on his own, he wouldn't have dared enter. As they got ready to leave, they heard a monster roar from within the forest. It came from very far away, so the noise was faint. But Hans sound, panning the surroundings with his ears like radar dishes, felt his face drop. The noise sounded like it came from the black bear that he encountered at the giant tree. The roar was a mixture of sadness and anger, and he couldn't imagine what might have spurred its cry. Although Hansen greatly desired to find out what had happened, he wanted to take Qin Wen Zhao and Su Xiao Qiao to the nearest shelter first. When he took them there, he bid that they should wait for him. Then he returned to the forest borders. Standing outside the peach forest, Hansen could still faintly hear the cries of the black bear. The continued noise eased his worry that the creature might be dead, and taking great care, he stepped into the forest and treaded lightly as he followed the sound of the cries. Because he hadn't brought the silver fox with him, he made sure to take the utmost care along the way. It was far more difficult for him to make progress beneath the boughs this time, as he encountered many creatures along the way. There were snakes everywhere. Hansen summoned his golden armor and gargoyle glyph to avoid the bevies of snakes and continued his venture to where the cries of the black bear originated. Suddenly, Hansen saw a pink little snake slithering. Had he never visited this forest before, he would have continued on his way. But the pink snake looked a little inconspicuous. It was only one foot long, and it was very thin. With its pink body, it looked practically harmless. It gave the impression that it was the sort of creature you could simply squish underfoot. But Hansen remembered this snake. This pink little snake was under the giant tree, practicing with all the other creatures. It was a scary snake. Hansen suddenly stopped moving and put away all the powers in his body. He only wanted to take a look at what was happening with the black bear and did not want conflict with the pink snake. But the pink snake looked as if it had not even noticed Hansen's presence. It just carried on slithering in another direction. It was going so slowly, as if it was taking a stroll through the park. After a while, it managed to reach a peach tree, where it decided to climb up. Hansen felt as if something was wrong, so he opened his gene lock and planned to run off. But that was when he noticed a group of snakes surrounding him. There were red, green, 
black, white, and pattern snakes. They were all around the ground and all along the trees like vines. He couldn't tell how many were there. The king of these creatures is so evil. Hansen was shocked at what had happened, so he summoned his wings and tried to fly away. But then he saw a snake with wings leap out of the trees. Even the pink little snake had transparent blood wings. It flew above Hansen and circled there, prohibiting any chance of an airborne escape. Hansen quickly summoned his flaming wreck spike, the two-meter-long weapon. He threw it at a group of snakes, which instantly incinerated them into charcoal. The strike formed a gap in the ring of snakes around him, and he dashed through it. It didn't take Hansen long to realize that the pink snake was very similar to the Wolf King and Pegasi King. Its powers rested in the abundance of its subordinates and its ability to command them. The snakes established a formation, and although they had trouble in their attempts to harm Hansen, they forced Hansen to go deeper into the forest. What does this pink snake want? Hansen was shocked, but then he noticed that the pink snake might not want to kill him. It just continued to push him deeper and deeper into the peach forest. Who knew what it wanted? But that was what it did. It was almost obvious how much the pink snake wanted to drive him deeper. Hansen did not want to underestimate the intelligence of these creatures. He wanted to escape, but not a single window of opportunity had become available. The forest was full of snake-like creatures. Sometimes, they flew out from the crowns of peach trees like locusts, a plague, everywhere. On and on, they banished Hansen into the deeper recesses of the peach forest. The snakes were chasing Hansen towards the black bear. Hansen had been pushed 100 miles, and the roars of the bear were clearer and more distinct. The cries were louder than he had imagined, and the bear was extremely angry now. Hansen gritted his teeth, thinking he might as well speed up and fly towards the bear. The crowd of snakes did not attack, but they picked up their pace to follow him. For some reason, they really wanted Hansen to go there. Chapter 678 The Battle Between Super Creatures Perhaps it was because of the snake group, but Hansen did not see any other creatures. The peach forest seemed to be solely for the countless snakes. Inside the peach forest, Hansen had no idea how far he had now traveled. All that occupied his vision were snakes and trees. As he went, the roar of the bear came closer and closer. From afar, Hansen could see that a section of the peach forest was in chaos. Snap trunks of trees were strewn about, branches littered the ground, and soil had been churned up in a mess. He ascended a hill, and he finally saw the black bear. It was guarding the entrance of a cave, its body stained in blood. It roared to the sky. In front of it was the bone elephant. The bone elephant's trunk and tusks kept bashing the bloody bear, and it was clear that the bear stood no chance against the enraged elephant. It had many wounds on its body, and blood oozed from its mouth. Still, it continued to guard the cave entrance and keep the elephant from passing. Does a treasure reside within the cave? Are both super creatures fighting for treasure? Hansen changed his position to get a good look at what was inside the cave. What he saw inside was a smaller black bear, peeping its head out of the cave's entrance. Now Hansen understood why, despite its inferior strength, the black bear insisted on guarding the cave. It was protecting its child. The bone elephant's body was turning red, while the black bear's body was turning pitch black. They were both strong when it came to vitality, and the scene of them battling, in view of the hill, was a shocking spectacle. Rocks had been broken, trees had been unearthed. Wood chips and leaves were mixed into the soil, and the ground trembled when the titans collided. The black bear was huge, and he thought it was scarier than the frosty bear. The frosty bear possessed ice powers but the black bear had powerful vitality. Even though Hansen had his flaming wreck spike with him, he doubted it'd be able to penetrate the creature's hide. It was a shame that the bear had to confront a much more powerful enemy like the bone elephant. They were both magnificent super creatures, yet if one was weaker in one particular department, the weakness would be obvious for the other to see and exploit. The big black bear held back a tusk that was being driven towards it. The power was too much, though. The bear was pushed back against the cliffside by the bone elephant, the cliffside developing a crack under the force. The tusk penetrated through the bear's defense and skewered the bear. Blood coated the tusk that now pierced it. Pang! The black bear kicked the bone elephant's neck, which made it fall back a bit. But the bear's attack was, quite obviously, not very effective. The damage it dealt was negligible. The snake crowd had disappeared, obviously not wanting to get close to the battle. The pink snake had gone, too. 
Hansen had no idea why the pink snake had chased him here. It wouldn't just send me here so I could enjoy the show, would it? Hansen furrowed his brow as he contemplated the reason. But when he looked at the big black bear and the cub that was inside the cave, his eyes glittered. It was obvious that the black bear could not compete with the bone elephant. If it continued fighting like this, it would only be a matter of time before it died. What if this was a chance for another easy kill? If the black bear could produce babies, perhaps its life geno essence was the same as the golden growlers. Maybe it could be absorbed by humans? Thinking about this, Hansen got excited. Maybe this was Lady Luck smiling on him, providing him the opportunity to be the one who cracked the secrets of the life geno essence. Hansen then contemplated when might be the right time for him to strike. That was when he suddenly heard some noise come from behind. In fright, he turned around and saw the pink snake writhed around a branch near him. Repeatedly, it stuck its tongue out and hissed. Hansen froze in place. He had no idea when the snake had drawn so near. He hadn't sensed its approach at all. That should have been impossible against someone like Hansen, who had superb senses. The pink snake was two feet away from Hansen, and so he didn't dare to move. He was afraid that the pink snake would strike if he tried anything. The flaming wreck spike was too big for the snake, too. It was ideal for taking on big super creatures, but for something as small as the snake, Hansen would need precision. The wreck spike was too cumbersome and large to effectively target the snake. The pink snake, however, did not intend to attack Han Senator. The snake watched Hansen, and then it squeezed its body and broke the branch it had slithered along. It then writhed itself around the broken branch and used it to ride on the ground. Hansen watched the pink snake with surprise. He had no idea what it wanted, but its intelligence was astounding. Hansen watched the pink snake hold onto the branch and draw a few simple lines, which eventually formed the shape of an elephant. Hansen quickly realized it was referring to the bone elephant. But Hansen did not know why the snake was drawing. As he wondered why, he noticed the pink snake draw an X on top of the image. Seeing that the bone elephant's picture had been crossed, Hansen then understood that the pink snake wanted Hansen to kill it. Hansen was flabbergasted. He thought the pink snake might have wanted to get an easy kill along with him, by targeting the black bear. After all, the black bear had already been grievously injured and was severely weaker compared to the bone elephant. It would have been possible to wait until the bear was on the brink of death, before waltzing up and killing it in a single strike, even. But the little pink snake wanted to get rid of the bone elephant instead, and this surprised Hansen a great deal. Animals are animals. No matter how smart, they don't understand the concept of stakes. Hansen underestimated the pink snake. But the more Hansen thought about it, the less correct his initial assumptions seemed. He'd seen the intelligence of the super creature, and it was the king of its kind. Perhaps it did understand the stakes. It must have had a reason to deal with the bone elephant, or maybe it just had a fleeting interest in the beast. Hansen remembered when he was under the giant peach tree, the pink snake and the black bear were the same. Inside them, there was no energy flowing. It was just a blur. But the bone elephant and the little black bear had a special energy flow inside them. Is there any connection between that and what's going on now? The more Hansen thought about things, the more shocked he became. If the little pink snake's target were the creatures that had energy inside them, its desire to deal with the bone elephant seemed normal. But now that the big black bear was heavily injured, if the little pink snake got rid of the bone elephant, the cub would have lost its protection. The cub might end up as another target of the pink snake. After all, this forest did seem to be the pink snake's territory. With its army of snakes, the other creatures could be considered outsiders. They didn't have others to help them. These kings are always so menacing. Hansen shouted, in his heart. But hope still resided there. Chapter 679 killing the bone elephant. The pink snake forced Hansen to go near the bone elephant as it planned for them both to tackle the monster together. The pink snake itself was afraid of the power that the bone elephant possessed, so it sought to use the human called Hansen for help. Hansen was interested in both the bone elephant and the cub inside the cave. The three life geno essences he had collected so far were obtained from super creatures that did not leave bodies behind. Hansen guessed that might have been because they were first-generation super-creatures. The bone elephant and the black bear were second-generation super-creatures, and if they were anything like the golden growler, their bodies would not disintegrate when they were killed. Instead, they'd leave behind an edible life geno-essence. 
Angel's evolution was reaching a critical point. She did not want to eat sacred blood creatures anymore. But despite that, the evolution wasn't triggering. Perhaps the flesh of a super creature was exactly what she needed. Hansen, regardless of the snake's pushing, believed he should take out the bone elephant. Otherwise, if the big bear died, it'd be harder for Hansen to get the cub, as it would then be in the possession of the bone elephant. The pink snake watched Hansen still standing there. It opened its mouth and hissed, prompting him to go. Hansen groaned and then summoned his flaming wreck spike. After that, he approached the bone elephant. The pink snake saw Hansen rush forward, so it spread its blood wings and flew off like an arrow into the bone elephant's ear. Its aim was fairly clear, in that it wished to cause the elephant harm from inside its body. The bone elephant sensed the pink snake's sly attack, as it wriggled around in the elephant's ear. In response, it used its trunk to grab a hold of it and pull it out. The pink snake writhed and wriggled in the air, dodging the follow-up attack. Hansen's flaming wreck spike was driven down onto the elephant's body with a fair strike. A metal noise rung out after the hit, however, and only white marks scuffed the red bones. Hansen's hands were numbed by the strike. He almost couldn't hold the weapon anymore. It's tough, Hansen said to himself in surprise. The elephant reacted to the attack with added rage, despite not being injured very much. It attempted to turn around and rush towards Hansen but the big bear's paws latched onto the elephant's tusks and prevented it from turning. That was the opportunity the pink snake needed to try to wriggle its way into the elephant's ear again. Hansen raised the flaming wreck spike again and brought himself closer to the bone elephant's body. The bone elephant's bones were totally red, and there were no apparent weaknesses. So, Hansen took aim at the thinnest bone he could find and gave it a good wallop. The bone elephant's tusks were still being grabbed by the bear, and it couldn't move. It trumpeted to the sky. With an enormous burst of strength, it picked up the bear as it clung onto the tusks and threw it towards the mountainside. There was a large crashing sound and much of the hill was ruined. The bone elephant then quickly retrieved the snake from its ear with its trunk again. It kicked its thick back legs, one of which had the flaming wreck spike bearing down on it. One foot hit Hansen and sent him flying away. The bone elephant was so strong, it effortlessly battled three opponents and dominated them with ease. Hansen's body was sent careering through several peach trees before he dropped to the ground. Although he had his golden armor and gargoyle glyph for protection, he still ended up spitting blood. His chest was on fire. Fudge. This bone elephant is so much harder than the frosty giant bear. Hansen bit down on his teeth and pulled himself back up on two feet. Fortunately for him, his weapon absorbed most of the elephant's strike. Had he borne the brunt of the hit, he feared he would be half dead by now. The bone elephant trumpeted again and lowered its head, aligning its tusks with the immobile black bear. It took off sprinting towards the bear, looking like a mountain falling from the sky. If the bear was hit, it'd be very dead. The big bear had already been significantly injured, on top of the situation it had just been thrown into. It couldn't get itself free from the rubble, and a finishing strike from the tusks seemed likely. Roar. The cub that was hiding in the cave, seeing its mother about to be killed, let out a young scream. The fur on its body looked obsidian as it emerged from the shadow of the cave. It hopped onto the bone elephant and scratched a few deep marks into its bones. The bone elephant screamed in pain as it used its trunk to remove the cub that was on top of it. This bought the big bear enough time to climb out of the rubble. Seeing the bone elephant about to hit the cub, the big bear grabbed onto the elephant's trunk and fell down on its knees. It roared, pulling down on the trunk as best it could, not allowing the elephant to move it. The bone elephant kept moving its trunk, trying to get rid of the big bear that clung onto it so tightly. The powerful downward force of the bear had its feet digging into the earth, creating two large trenches as it pulled as hard as it could. The pink snake used this third opportunity to fire itself into the elephant's ear like a bolt of lightning. It caused pain to the elephant, which had it screaming to the skies. In its sudden madness, it managed to toss the bear and the cub away. Hansen was behind the bone elephant's back. He performed toxic dragon drill and once again took aim at his foe's backside. He wanted to replicate the results of his battle against the giant frosty bear and break his enemy's butthole. The strong spin dug hard into the elephant's clenched anus, which caused a terrific firework of sparks. But it didn't drill for long, and soon after, it stopped. The bone elephant's body was built from steel and Hansen lacked the power to drive it further. 
If the powerful flaming wreck spike could not break its bones, drilling as far as he wanted was out of the question. Seeing the mad bone elephant kick with ferocity, Hansen managed to dodge it this time. His focus was now at its best, and he detected another kick coming his way. He evaded that one, too. The pink snake had dug itself deep into the canals of the elephant's ears, which fueled its anger and madness even further. Hansen and the bear then attacked the bone elephant at the same time, but it still wouldn't go down. The big bear was the tank that absorbed damage. If the bear had not been there to sustain most of the bone elephant's attacks, Hansen and the cub would have died many times over. Hansen gave it everything he had, trying to draw its attention while the bone elephant dealt with the big bear. Although the cub was not as strong as the bone elephant or its mother, it had obsidian claws. It was still better than Hans since flaming wreck spike. Every scratch from the cub left deep marks in the bone elephant, even if it didn't do much lasting damage. The pink snake that drilled into the bone elephant's ears seemed to be dealing the most damage to the bone elephant. It was driven mad, screaming constantly. Pang. The cub was whacked by the trunk and sent flying. Its little body knocked down a few peach trees. What surprised Hansen the most about this, however, was the way it leapt right back onto its feet and went running back into battle. The children of super creatures are incredibly OP. Hansen was in shock as he watched it. The black cub was very young, yet it was already that resilient. When it grew up, it was sure to be as strong as the bone elephant. Chapter 680 Power of One Hit The mountain shook and the ground was torn asunder. A few scary creatures were battling to the death, and in their midst was Hans Senator he was like a pawn, only doing minor things. He did not dare to use Elephant Rex Strike, no matter how much he wanted to. He was too weak to fight the Bone Elephant, and he knew he was little more than a distraction in the grander scale of this fight. Hansen would become weak after a single use of Elephant Rex Strike, so it was not a skill he dared to use on a whim. The power the skill required was massive, and even with Long Live and Jade Sun Force, it had taken an hour for him to regenerate the energy it used. The situation had become complicated. Hansen did not want to use Elephant Rex Strike because, if he was drained of all energy, he'd be unable to steal the winnings of the battle and escape. But Hansen's presence in the fight was not unwanted or unneeded. He and the cub were able to aid the big bear by restricting the elephant. With the bone elephant unable to focus all its strength on the big black bear, the playing field became more level. The bear was able to keep going. The bone elephant was screaming louder and louder, however. It stomped and rattled the earth with rage, perhaps even panic. If this carries on, the pink snake will be the one to earn the kill. Hansen was now in a rush. Hansen and the bear battled for their lives against the rampaging elephant. The pink snake might have been nibbling the interior organs of the elephant by now, and if it killed the elephant, Hansen's struggle would have been for nothing. But Hansen had no way to kill it himself. Even if he used Elephant Rex Strike, he had no idea if it'd be effective enough to snap one of the creature's bones. Hansen's chances of securing the kill seemed non-existent. Hansen's heart sank. Without a solution for his predicament, all he could do was keep on fighting. Ping. The Bone Elephant unleashed a horrible power, blasting the big bear away. The elephant shook its head and ran towards the hill while yelping in pain. The cub ran towards the big bear, and they didn't look like they wanted to give it chase. Hansen looked at them both disapprovingly, then he gritted his teeth and went after the bone elephant by himself. Although the big bear was heavily injured, it could still fight. Furthermore, there was a cub guarding its side. Hansen was still at a huge disadvantage, even if the fight was to proceed with two versus one. Hansen ran across the mountains, following the bone elephant. He wondered what the pink snake might have done inside its body to drive it to such insanity. Hansen saw that the bone elephant was bleeding from all seven orifices. It was quite frightening, and Hansen imagined what a terrifying enemy the pink snake would be. If it drilled into his own ear, he couldn't imagine the wretched pain that would follow. Just thinking about it made him shudder in phantom pain as a chill ran down his spine. Earlier, the pink snake had appeared behind Hansen out of nowhere. Just thinking about that, Hansen broke out in a cold sweat. From the seven orifices, more and more blood gushed out. The wailing of the elephant was becoming gradually louder, as well. The trail they followed was blocked by a cliffside wall, but the bone elephant did not stop. Boom. The cliffside wall started to collapse as the elephant charged against it ceaselessly. Broken rocks fell atop the elephant, but it did not care. Over and over, 
it kept bashing the wall with its head. It looked as if it was ready to shatter its brain against the stone. The bone elephant brought up its trunk, and it punched its own head repeatedly. The skull of the elephant almost looked ready to break open. Hansen was getting goosebumps just watching the scene. He swore he would never again let a snake get close to him, small snakes in particular. For this wretched demise to be dished out to a super creature of such Goliath power was incredible, and Hansen didn't think his own body would have lasted half as long. The bone elephant continued carving a new valley through the cliffside, and as the lands around shook, the elephant looked almost pitiful. Hansen kept his distance while he watched the scene unfold. The bone elephant was too strong, and he imagined that the pink snake was still biting a critical organ, fueling its madness further and further. There was not much Hansen could do, even if he decided to use the Rex spike somehow. The pink snake had obviously gotten into its brain by now, and it was only a matter of time before the bone elephant succumbed to the grasp of death. A tough body was useless against a foe that had slithered its way inside. Its flesh was super creature class, so there was no reason for Han Sin to try to drill into the ear and attempt the same. But for the super creature pink snake, it was no problem. If biting once did not work, biting a few more times would. The pink snake was most likely venomous, as well. And those toxins must have done their fair share of torturous work. The bone elephant was far stronger than humans thought it was. A mountain cliffside a few hundred meters high was being brought down by the tusk monster. But now, it stopped. It fell down to the ground, whimpering. It sounded strained, getting weaker and weaker. It looked as if its demise was near. It wept bloody tears as the light inside its eyes faded. Its brain had now most likely been ravaged by the pink snake. Blood cascaded from its mouth and ears with little restraint, like a tap. It was sure to die any second now, and the hopeless, twitching mount it had collapsed into. Hansen's heart then began to beat with speed. The bone elephant had driven its head into the cliffside many times, but its skull didn't shatter, after all. This most likely meant that Hansen could not get an easy kill, but he had to do something. Even if he used Elephant Rex Strike, there was no guarantee he could split the skull in two. This made the final hit seem pretty much secured by the pink snake. Hansen gritted his teeth and leapt down beside the nearly lifeless head of the elephant. It had almost no reaction, in its final moments before death. Hansen cast his senses to scan the bone elephant, its head, in particular. His hands gleamed as he gathered frightening strength. The Dongshin Sutra simulated the bone elephant's flow of energy. His whole body was replicating the bone elephant's persona, thrumming with power like a living scream. His hands were illuminated with a most terrifying power. Hansen did not summon the flaming wreck strike, however. It would have been useless for him to try to crack the skull now. He only had one chance, and he had to secure a one-hit kill on the elephant. If the elephant wreck strike did not work, there would be no second chance. Hansen chose to use his hands to cast the elephant wreck strike because he was opting to use his Yin Yang blast and drive that power directly into the elephant's brain. He wasn't going to rush this, however. He couldn't afford to screw up his one chance. He needed to watch carefully and unleash his attack in the final second before the creature's death. At the same time, Hansen sensed the pink snake's location in the elephant's brain. He hoped that this hit could also deal significant damage, or perhaps even death, to the pink snake at the same time. If great damage was dealt, it would at least buy Hansen some time to escape with the goodies. If he couldn't strike both creatures at the same time, Hansen was certain the snake would not let him go. Plus, he'd be weak.